All right, got it. Got them tore down and cleaned up from the last bash session. What we got back here motors and electronics and stuff. Um, bent a shaft and broken arm on the truck. So here's the MP10 truck, broken arm, MP10 buggy, bent shaft. It's cool. Um, here's my aluminum carriers I did on both of them just to kind of make them more stable. No big deal. Um, oh, I burnt my, uh, my little side panel here too. So I got a huge order coming from a main and, um, we'll get them racked back up. So that's all fine and well. So, and, um, just continuing the build on the e buggy. Um, it's the MP 10 e buggy. She's almost there. Um, Evan, my 10 scale, uh, my 10 scale partner, really good at soldering. Did an awesome solder job for me. I definitely could have, couldn't have done it. So I got to keep, uh, keep plugging away on this e-buggy here, which is fine. But mostly, um, I just wanted to sit and just talk a minute. Um, and just kind of, um, just give a final recap of the race in Washington now that some time has gone by. And um, just kind of wanted to go through it and just give like a final, final thoughts and kind of like that. It is hot as shit. I'm sweating now. I don't have AC here. The back of my package car was probably about 130, you know, one but I didn't spend too much time back there today. Um, I, I load all my own shit in the morning. I, I go through my truck completely um, and just make sure that I'm not gonna be back there dicking around, digging. No. <laughs> so it's, it's cool. I do that every day and just get, get prepared, but it, it's cool. I'm staying cool out there, lots of water, wear the wet towel and just Keep your keep your skin covered from that sun. I like to cover my cover my skin. Some dudes will wear shorts and short sleeve shirts, and all their skin is showing. Oh my god! I do the opposite. I cover. I wear long socks. I cover everything, and I feel fine. I don't get hot really at all. Okay. Um. Walla Walla, NCT round two, final afterthoughts. This fan's pissing me off. finally breathe and kick back and just think about it and just kind of go over some key points, you know, like what did I notice? What was different about this race than the first race I entered um, last summer? I just shaved. Hopefully I don't have any cuts going. <laughs> what was different about this race? Um, it was a lot more entries. It was way bigger. The race last summer in 2020, the Northwest shootout in Albany had like probably 75 entries. Um, and I believe we were looking at about 350 entries. Now that's not 350 drivers. That's just entries. That's still a shitload. You know, dudes are entering like four classes, five classes. Insane. All right. So more entries. Um, three-day format the form um, their format is three days so okay I mentioned that in the other video already three-day format um, as opposed to um, the first race last summer which was just uh, I believe we pr uh, could practice a little bit on Friday and then Saturday was qualifying and mains were Sunday course I got there on Friday night last summer so I didn't I didn't get there to practice really on um, on Friday the night before and it was just it was open practice it wasn't like um, you know like practice heats like this last one was so um, that was different you know so I, I think at a big race 
having the whole thing go to a schedule is good. Um, I think uh, it would be too hard to, to, to practice if it wasn't like that. It would just be impossible. So, um, you know, controlled practice is a good deal. All right, controlled practice. Um, I think there are, I was looking at my notes from, from last year. I wrote down all the classes. I think there was like maybe, maybe 10 classes. And um, I believe this one had, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe a, cu a couple more, a couple more. It's, there had to be a couple more classes than maybe there was like maybe 12. I'll just say 12 classes. There had to be more, more than 10. Let's just say 12 classes. Um, so, all right, fair enough. Um, and, you know, it was, so we knew there was gonna be a lot of classes, the days were long, it was fine. Um, so, and it ran awesome. I mean, I gotta say, they, they stuck, they, they had a plan and they stuck to it and it, it ran really good. You know, I think it worked really well. Um, okay, so we're back here in Central Oregon the drag is these events are just really far. You know, I was looking at my map for the next couple events that might be near us and um, they're really far away. And it's, it's a bummer. I, I would love to go to one fuck next weekend. You know, I would go running back to that. It was too fun. It was way too fun. You know, I mean, if you have all the gear and you can survive one, why not run back to the next one? Unfortunately, they're just, they're, they're like six hours away. They're just, they're too far. They're in Southern Washington. So right now in the state of Oregon, we, um, we don't have an outdoor eighth track anywhere in the whole state. So it was good. We went to that one. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what looks clever. That's close to us. Uh, a main and Chico might be, I mean, None of us have gone to one of those. And the weather, the weather's good down there in NorCal. Maybe those go all year. So maybe we could always pack up and be going down to Chico if, um, you know, just getting days off of work. I mean, I, I get, I work for a big corporation. So we get our vacation weeks and we get a certain amount of burn down days, optional holidays, and then that's it. So, um, I think uh, I might have used pretty much my whole burn down bank for that one race. So um, we got to figure out how to do this closer. So, you know, mostly we, we're just really trying to um, see about getting something in our area, you know, finding some land that has water and maybe trying to host some events ourselves. And also just being able to practice more. Um, we do get blasted with snow. We are shut down in the winter and we all do winter type shit. Um, you know, some of our guys snowmobile. I like to go snowboarding up at Hoodoo when we get enough snow. Um, I like to be out in my cabin in Christmas Valley in the winter time, riding my quad in a bit of snow on the dunes. Um, so we are a winter town and we all do snow shit. If it, even if it means just taking our trucks down a trail you know, in the snow and seeing what happens, like we all do snow shit. So we, we love the snow here, you know, I love it. So that is a factor in that, um, we really, we can't run half the year. We can't drive half the year. We really can't. I mean, I say that and so far it's been true. Um, there are, um, there are covered places where people have horses, these like riding arenas, but um, I don't know, you know, we don't know anyone that really has one of those that we can just start digging holes and moving dirt in. So we pretty much have to accept the fact that we are shut down for half the year because we live in a snow town and that's just what it is. You know, um, I love it up here again. I love the snow. I'm not looking to run south or anything. I want to make part of the year work with outdoor eighth and then the other year is just dedicated to being in snow in the winter time and just getting down so um yeah we just want to be able to practice and um be able to go to events with you know with some practice we can practice in the in on the backyard track that's good practice that's totally cool and that's a lot of fun and we'll continue to do that and it has brought more people out. Dudes have bought kits knowing that, that we can get down in the backyard and stuff. We've kind of simulated some events. Um, 
we have transponders, you know, we, you know, we, we were counting laps back there on the laptop, you know, we we're doing our best to simulate races as much as we can. Okay. Um, let me, let me th think about, um, the Walla Walla race again. I'm just trying to sort of recap and just see if anything kind of comes to mind about that. And, um, I can say, yeah, I learned, I learned quite a bit about doing it the second time around. It's kind of hard to say, um, each thing you learned, you just survive them, you know? Um, it was so hot up there. I know we all got, but just a few hours of sleep each night, you know, we'd go to bed like pretty late and then wake up right when that sun starts hitting that trailer or that tent or one dude was outside on a cot. I mean, when the sun comes up, you're up. So the days were very long. Uh, I had an idea that they would be that long, though, just with how many people that have to get down and race and run their events. These days are very long. That's okay. Um, I'm okay with a long race day. It's fun being there. It's just what it is. A big, a big race is going to have a lot of events, and you're going to be there for a long time. So that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. And, um, I, I don't know, I guess, um, just everything else you just kind of, you just kind of learn once you're there. Um, I thought by talking about it, I would, some stuff would come to mind, but I don't know. Um, I guess it's just one of those things. It stays with you as you go through it. And then once it's done, you just want to go to the next one. You know, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'll say right now. Um, I stayed in ninth is my, my result. <laughs> I was last. I came in last in my event. And it felt right just to let the rippers go by. Okay. I let the rippers go by. Um, we were running with the best in the Northwest. That was very evident when we got there. But it was okay because we had good race kits. We had good gear. Our shit ran. But when it come down to it, we knew these dudes drive all year. And we still just, you just adapt to that. I was the only one on our crew that came in dead last. Um, Bob and Sean and Britt at least were able to, whether it was in a qualifier or in mains, they, they were ahead of a couple of other guys. So that's, that's killer. I mean, but. I was last. I was last in pretty much all my qualifies and my main. So it's okay, you know, it just shows you gotta practice to get ahead of at least a couple guys at one of these. I mean, they don't run novice classes at these, you know, I mean, at least if you're running nitro. Um, there was a novice class, but I think that was more for like, like families and stuff, which was cool. They had fun. And but we, you know, we just have like the normal classes uh, your, or your sportsman's class or, I mean, that's it. You just pretty much you're, you're running with really good drivers. So um, it was all right. You know, I just practiced just staying alive out there. I didn't flame once. No flame outs. That was killer. You know, that gave me a lot of confidence that my stuff was going to run and it did. So that was fine. Um, the kits that I ran, the Kyosho kits did fucking awesome. They're really fun to drive. I think the Kyosho kits are really set up for like anybody can drive them. You know, they're just a good sturdy platform that pretty much anybody can drive and they're going to stay planted. And, you know, I just follow my book and, and, um, get some, um, I don't know if it had, specific diff oil recommendations. Um, I think I had to ask around a little bit, but you get your kit built, you follow your book, pretty much any, any of the, um, race kits you buy, you'll get something awesome you can put on the track and you won't worry about that. Um, you know, you, and then you walk up that stand and you know, you keep blipping it, hoping your shit stays on and, um, and you're on, you know? So, I mean, everything ran, it was a lot of fun and I just wanted to stay alive out there. You know, I have a lot of practice to do as far as driving and, um, we're going to practice 
and hopefully make it to we will make it to other events we'll figure it out we'll, we'll get there um, I'm building this e-buggy and so um, I recommend going to a race with the crew you guys straight up um, it's so much funner with the crew but we had four guys in nitro truck there was one guy that launched all four of our trucks during qualifying and we knew like when it came to main time it wasn't going to work but it was killer we had two guys we had four guys so we were able to pit for two guys and they ran it you know they ran the main which was fine it was a lot of fun for everybody we got the pit experience um but for going to races the more dudes you can bring you know the better um so you know for my next race i can uh i can run 40 plus e buggy and nitro buggy and then um you know if there's other guys there that are running truck we can pit for them they'll pit for me and just um if you're going there with a couple guys maybe you can just see if um you know try to run different classes and stuff so everybody can help one another um as far as shoulder tapping someone to pit for you at a race no impossible there's no way at least i don't know man where, where there is that you know this many people running around at this thing up here i mean it feels like it felt like a big event and there was no way in hell that you were going to walk up to someone and see if they could pit for you it just wasn't going to happen dudes were running scrambling scrambling guys are running up to like four different classes and there's no way that you I mean, so I'm, um, you know, I was lucky. I was up there with some guys, and you know, one of our guys was able to pit for me in my nitro class, and I could pit for him in his truck class. But um, there might be some guys that are looking to go to one of these races by themselves and lone wolf it and run a nitro event. And I mean, you might be able to shoulder tap for someone, but um, honestly, I came away with a big reminder <laughs> of that you gotta you gotta have someone to pit for you at a nitro race you have to you you can't ask someone that you don't know up there they just they won't want to do it it's just too gnarly there's too much going on so um you know uh new racers you know bring another guy with you you know um bring a buggy bring a truck just run one class and then you know if if your um other buddies new to it too you know just he runs truck, you run buggy, or vice versa, and definitely go there with at least one other guy for sure. Um, it might be a bad deal if you lo if you drive really far and lone wolf it to a race just to be show up there, and the shit's going off and you don't have a pit guy. That would be like, you know, not a not a good deal. So, um, all new racers, myself included, um, go with a small crew, at least one other guy. And you'll have a lot more fun. Um, uh, I, I would, I'm excited to run e-buggy, you know. That means I can get more track time. I don't have to worry about a pit guy. And I could still run a, um, a nitro class, you know, whether it's buggy or truck, you know. Just, you know, have your two build every race kit of every kind, you know. Um, the e-trucks are killer. I'm excited to run buggy. Um, just, you know, have a kit of every kind. Who knows what you might be grabbing for. Anyway, that's just my little word of advice, um, you know, is just if you're going to run a Nitro event, you got to have a pit person with you and your crew, man. Um, other than that, it was, it was, I mean, it was killer. I did learn a lot, but again, it's kind of hard to really go back over it um nothing broke i didn't break anything up there i brought a whole tote of parts not a damn thing broke i can talk about the track a little bit um it seemed like it was it was pretty forgiving like we weren't really on the throttle a whole lot you know um i'm sure our temps didn't get too hot because mostly um it was the straightaway every track has a straightaway where you pin it and then um mostly it was you know just maneuvering turns your bump sections um you know you 
you do a double and then a double and then there was a triple so you would try to land down that other side of that double hit it to try to make the triple I mean but for the most part we weren't really hauling ass on this thing too much it was mostly just trying to handle corners trying to get speed where you could and I learned a lot it, it was a tricky track there was a lot of like off-center type shit going on which was cool I'd never been on anything like that before the track before that I went to it seemed like it was more kind of more linear like there wasn't really there wasn't really a lot of off-center stuff so this was a challenge um, also this track they didn't fix it as the weekend goes on I don't know if that's something that all races do maybe it is um, but you know they just there was no fixing the track and I thought that was cool. It was just super, you know, real bumpy, off-roady. And it was killer. You know, I really liked it. It was, it's sort of, you know, just another thing you had to adapt to. So that, it was super, like, true off-road, man. Bumpy track. So they didn't fix the track at all. Um, no sweeping it, no fixing it. Just water it and let it burn, man. That's what it is. So... Um, again, this was a uh, in Northwest Championship Tour. This is a series in the Northwest, so it was, it was a lot of fun. And now that we know how they how they go down, we'll be ready for the next one. They are three day events, so you know, try to get there early on Friday. And um, yeah, man. So um, now that we know how those go. I'm pretty curious about going to an, uh, an A-Main in California, so if anyone on here plans on hitting up uh, A-Main and Chico, man, holler, man, and maybe we can link up, you know. All right, you guys, my name's Craig, High Desert Agro RC, Central Oregon, and um, I'm just going to listen to it rain a little bit out there and see what I can do about getting this e-buggy built, man, later on.